Hi and Assalamualaikum, my name is Aina and I'm from the Big 60 and today I'd like to present about the importance of capital budgeting in business. To begin my presentation, capital budgeting is a process that helps in planning the investment projects of an organization in the long run. It is useful for evaluating capital investment projects such as purchasing equipment and the rebuilding of equipment. Firstly, the importance of capital budgeting in business is it involves the long-term strategic goals development in any businesses. A capital budgeting decision has its effect over a long time span and affects the company's future cost structure and growth. The framework analyzes risk and rewards based not only on the present but on the movement necessary to reach future goals. Other than that, the importance of capital budgeting is it also maximizes the worth of equity shareholders. The value of equity shareholders is increased by the acquisitions of fixed assets through capital budgeting. A proper capital budget results in the optimum investment instead of overinvestment and underinvestment in fixed assets. The importance of capital budgeting is it able to forecast the future. Capital budgeting framework forecasts the future so that the business didn't have to run hypothetical analysis on all potential investments. The process will automatically estimate with financial milestones the company will be hitting and how any potential investment will play in a role, either in a positive or negative sides in that growth. Lastly, the importance of the capital budgeting is the national importance itself. The selection of any project results in the employment opportunity, economic growth and increase per capita income. They are the ordinary positive impact of any project selection made by the company. Next, Iqmal, can you explain about the comparison between the payback period and the discounted payback period? Hi and Assalamualaikum. I would like to discuss and compare two types of capital budgeting techniques. Two types that I choose is payback period and discounted payback period. First, what is the payback period? The payback period refers to the amount of time it takes to recover the cost of an investment. Simply put, the payback period is the length of time investment to reach a break-even point. The disability of investment is causally related to its payback period. Means, short paybacks mean more attractive investment. Although, calculating the payback period is useful in financial and capital budgeting. This metric has applications in other industries. It can be used by homeowners and businesses to calculate the return on energy efficient technologies such as solar panels and insulations, including maintenance and upgrades. Next, what is discounted payback period? The discounted payback period is a capital budgeting procedure used to determine the profitability of a project. A discounted payback period gives the number of years it takes to break even from undertaking the initial expenditure by discounting future cash flows and recognizing the time value of money. The, the metric is used to evaluate the feasibility and profitability of a given project. The payback period does not account for what happens after payback, ignoring the overall profitability of an investment. Many managers and investors thus prefer to use NPV as a tool for making investment decisions. The NPV is the difference between the present value of cash coming in and the current value of cash going out over a period. Discounted payback period is the more simplified payback period formula which simply divides the total cash outlay for the project by the average annual cash flow doesn't provide as accurate of an answer to the question of whether or not to take on a project because it assumes only one upfront investment and does not factor in the time value of money. The difference between payback period and discounted payback period is the payback period is the amount of time for a project to break even in cash collections using nominal monies. Alternatively, the discounted payback period reflects the amount of time necessary to break even in a project based on not only what cash flows occur but when they occur and the prevailing rate of return in the market. These two calculations, although similar, may not return the same result due to discounting of cash flows. For example, 
project with higher cash flow towards the end of the project life will experience greater discounting due to compound interest. For this reason, the payback period may return in a positive figure, while the discounted payback period returns a negative figure. Example of payback period that can be described is assume company A invests 1 million ringgit machine in a project that is expected to save the company 250,000 ringgit machine each year. The payback period for this investment is 4 years. Dividing 1 million ringgit Malaysia by 250,000 ringgit Malaysia. Consider another project that costs 200,000 ringgit Malaysia with no associated cash savings will make the company an incremental 1,000 ringgit Malaysia each year for the next 20 years at 2 million ringgit Malaysia. For the discounted payback period example, which I can describe is Assume that company A has a project requiring an initial cash outlay of 3,000 ringgit. The project is expected to return 1,000 ringgit Malaysia each period for the next 5 periods and the appropriate discount rate is 4%. Let's move to the advantage and disadvantage for payback period and discounted payback period. The most significant advantage of the payback period method is its simplicity. It's an easy way to compare several projects and then to take the project that has the shortest payback time. The payback period can probably be calculated without even using a calculator or electronic spreadsheet. Another advantage of payback period method is very useful in case of uncertainty. The payback period is very useful in the industries that are uncertain or witness rapid technological change. Such uncertainty makes it difficult to project the future annual cash inflows. Thus, using an undertaking project with short payback period helps in reducing the chance of a loss through obsolescence. Next, the disadvantage of payback period. One of the disadvantages of payback period is not all cash flows covered. The payback period method considers the cash flows only till the time the initial investment is recovered. It fails to consider the cash flows that come in subsequent years. Such a limited view of the cash flows might force you to overlook a project uh, that could generate lucrative cash flows in their later years. Other than that, uh, this payback period method is not realistic. The payback period method is so simple that it does not consider normal business scenarios. Usually, uh, capital investments are not just one-time investments, rather such projects need uh, further investment in the following years as well. Also, projects usually have irregular cash inflows. Next, let's move the, to the advantage and disadvantage of discounted payback period. The main advantage of discounted payback period method is that it can give some clue about liquidity and uncertainty risk. Other things being equal, the shorter the payback period, the greater the liquidity of the project. Also, the longer the project, the greater the uncertainty risk of the future cash flows. Therefore, the shorter the payback period, the lower the overall risk of a project. However, the choice of a project solely on the basis of the payback criterion is purely an arbitrary decision. Other than that, it takes into account the time value of money by deflating the cash flows using cost of capital of the company. What is the disadvantage of discounted payback period? The main disadvantage of the discounted payback period method is that it does not take into discount cash flows coming in after break even. Furthermore, it shows only the time needed to recover the initial cost of a project and is some break even analysis technique. For this reason, this method can conflict with NPV and therefore can be wrong. Also, there isn't any way to determine how short the payback period should be to accept the project. In academic studies, using this method is not recommended for mutually exclusive projects. The accuracy of the output only depends upon the accuracy of 
the input provided, like the accuracy of figures of cash flows, the estimation of the timing of cash flows which affects their present values, and the accuracy of the discount rate to be used. That's all from us. Thank you.